Plus, and since we now updated our AIM as a monitor to the February version 2.0, which is released in June 2021 timeframe, uh, I'd like to show you real quick how to configure an asset with this new design and new performance that we bring around with this firmware update. So, as you see, I already connected to my asset monitor from this um, browser perspective by just entering the IP address and logging into it. And you see here in the screen, the dashboard screen here, and you see that there is no asset configured. Now, I was going to the asset section, you see there is no asset shown, and I press just the new asset button, um, choosing, for example, a fan, which is just an example of how to configure the assets from now on and how it appears. And with, you see the, uh, the fan has been chosen. You can enter, for example, a name, which is at my point only fan. You have description of fields, asset ID, and description, which is optional. Vendor information, if you have that available, you can enter it over here, but it's not necessary from functionality perspective. But now, for the details, you definitely should enter the running speed of the fan. So let's expect it being 3,000. RPM, uh, the number of poles might be ju just four, line frequency 50 hertz for Europe, and number of blades, for example, let's say eight blades. And with that, um, you can move forward to the bearing section, and as you remember from the past, you can enter a manufacturer, uh, you can enter a model type, um, you can choose what type of bearing it is, sleep bearing or anti-friction. So from anti-friction bearing perspective, you should enter the uh, mechanical parameters or frequency parameters of the bearing. But from now on, this is released, we now have a library available as well that you can easily go in and search for a model number. Um, so I'm just entering SKF, for example, and you see a list of number types. You can also enter a model number if you want to. And I'm going, for example, to the 1111, select this bearing, you see all the data is entered automatically and can do the same thing for the second bearing. Um, it's SKF again, same bearing type, select the bearing, and you're good at that point without having a need to search so much data sheets and uh, get all this data out of there individually. Now from source mapping perspective, you now see that we have groups. It's not every single measurement point shown from the screen furthermore. So um, you're just going and map those parameters, those channels you like to uh, have mapped with the asset configuration and the asset um, health analytics finally. So I'm going for the tachometer one for my speed measurements. Um, let's say group number two is inboard. So I'm going with one accelerometer over here. But what you see as well now at the lower part is that we have some additional parameters available, like winding temperatures, uh, motor current, uh, a general parameter. Those are not embedded into the rules that you see that from the gray marking as well. Four and five are just for reference and can be used for alarming, but they're no, po no part of the health analytic group. So I'm just going for a temperature read reading here and, for example, my pressure measurement that I have available from a sovereignty perspective. Now further from there, it's no difference to what we did before. For example, on the speed, we're able to have a high alarm, let's say at 3,050 RPM, high high at 3,100 RPM. And this could be set up individually from alarming perspective for every measurement point that is mapped and uh, from source perspective to the asset. So you can easily check the box for enabling the limits and enter the limits as required. And last but not least, now going to the analytics section, you see the data is loading and it shows me all the rules that are available and can be activated based on the fact what I did from the mapping perspective. So all the channels that are equipped with the valid information uh, can be used now inside of the asset itself. And this allows us to use those rules, those diagnosis rules uh, from as a monitor perspective to be activated. Never forget to classify the type of machine, which is still based over here. So this is the same classification that we did before. But now a few of those rules have been updated and got more valid information, more valid calculation of the health analytics inside, including PQ plus for the sleeve bearing rules, the gearbox and uh, 
uh, the bearing rules. And last but not least, we're just pressing the save button over here and this automatically saves our asset and activates the asset from health analytics perspective. Now with clicking onto the asset you see that the rules are now activated automatically. Um, yeah, they're driving and measuring the voltage, uh, the values coming in and finally coming back with the health analytics result. So from our demo, I'm just starting my demo right now to see a speed, to see some vibration levels coming in. And um, yeah, after that calculation, the health analytics will be activated and will be refreshed inside of the asset module once an hour.